Let's just take a minute to breathe in this fresh sea air. Ah, oh, yes. That smells like a fresh start to me. And of course, with the dragon dead, that's one last thing we need to worry about. So we can just focus on building things now, which is exactly what we're going to do. And when we do build, it's gonna be better than this, because let's be honest, I threw this together in about five minutes, just so I had a place to not die in. So with that in mind, there are three objectives I would like to achieve by the end of this video. Number one, find somewhere to live. Number two would be to create a sustainable food source, which this currently is not. And number three would be to build myself a starter house that isn't this one. Now, I could, of course, choose to live here and achieve all three things quite easily. I could expand the farm area quite easily, and I could improve the house I've already built. All three things done. Simple. However, I've got different plans for this area, so until then, this area is completely off-limits for building. Which means I need to find somewhere else. It's also very tempting to choose to settle here, in the village I lived in for a while, which has easy access to both a nether portal over there, as well as a stronghold just around the corner in this tree line. However, I also have plans for this place, which currently I do not possess the skills to realize. So instead, I'm going to come into this house, pick up some of the stuff I left here, and then we're going to carry on our way. And now that we have everything that we need for this adventure, we take one last look at the world that we know, and then head off into the wilderness. I could, of course, choose to build my starter base practically anywhere in this world. I could live in one of the many forests I ran through, but I've done that before. And this time around, I want to do something different. I did find some very interesting places that I could build in, but none of them screamed starter base at me. Maybe in the future I can build more of a main base in one of them, but for now, I kept looking. So I climbed to the top of this hill that I'm currently on, and I saw another village over there, and I was just about to climb back down to have a look at it, but then I noticed this area here, which is kind of cut away into the mountainside, almost. And I had an idea, considering that this seems to be between two villages, you've got the second one over there, and the first one that I discovered over this way, over there, I'm thinking this might be a good place for a house, just kind of nestled into the side here. Between two villages, I could put my crops down here out the front, I could have like a, a farm area for animals somewhere, not in here obviously because there's not enough space for that, but I could maybe try and flatten some of this out or maybe just kind of have the house spill out a little bit more or plan things out that way, but that's definitely something I can imagine doing. Just building a house here and this is certainly an unusual shape to build a house in. You know, it's almost kind of circular in some way. But that could be an interesting project. So I think, yeah, you know what? We're gonna build here. Objective one complete. And of course, with that done, we now have to complete the other two objectives. So first of all, I need to make myself, I need to make a hoe so I can make some farmland here. Even if it's just a temporary place kind of, wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. I need the water first which I have. It's fine, it's fine. I'm, I'm just kind of forgetting how things work around here. So where would be the best place for this? I'm trying to think. I could just put the crops down here for now on a flat surface just so I get maximum coverage until I start planning things out better. But I think here will do for at least one bucket. Let's use a potato to dig a hole because, you know, that's normal. And then we can fill that up and then we can use the hoe to just kind of get rid of some of this. And then I forget how many potatoes we have. We have 14 potatoes. That's good. So we can actually plant quite a few here. Like so. That's all of the potatoes I can currently manage. And then we do also have 
carrots as well as wheat seeds. Now, I'm going to plant down the wheat seeds first because I do need to entice animals back here so I can uh, I can breed them. I don't want to put them too far away from there because I will forget where I put them. So let's just go ahead and actually we'll put them down here on this part. We're going to put them here and I think that is perfect. I wouldn't quite call this a sustainable food source yet because there's not much of it, but it is a beginning. The next thing I need to think about is building materials. Now the trouble is because I've arrived here with a bunch of stuff, I don't really have any room to pick up anything. So what I'm going to have to do is chop this tree down and make myself a couple of double chests to put things in. And then we can truly begin. The trouble I have now though is I've traveled all this distance and I did not bring a bed with me. So we kind of need to fix that issue while not dying. So doing this at nighttime is possibly the worst idea I've ever had, but I need wool. Okay, quick, quick. I need to craft a bed. I need to craft a bed. Very quick, very quick. This'll do, this'll do. Just let it be daytime. Let it be daytime. And we're safe. Oh, that got a little bit interesting, shall we say? I'm down to two pork shops, and uh, that's about it. I put the rest of my food in the chests in the mountain side there, so that could have gone very wrong. Oh, thank God that's over. Now that we've survived the night, let's do a small bit of terraforming. My main goal with this first section is to try and open up the entrance area. The way it was initially seemed too closed off, and I wanted to give myself some space to work with. I also flattened the land out, both inside the curved area and out, giving myself room to make an area for crops and cows in the process. Speaking of, that's our next task. With the crops, I went with a very rough and basic version of a babbling brook waterway, so I could have both crops that I'm growing together on different layers from one water source. This initial trial went well, and I'll most likely be making a bigger version somewhere down the line. Afterwards, I moved on to making an area to keep the cows, which I'll be using both for food and for leather in order to make books for enchanting. And after doing a bit of cow wrangling, as well as some breeding, thanks to some wheat that I totally didn't stole from a nearby village, added to the burgeoning crop farm we have going on behind me over there, I'd say that is objective to completed. And with our food sources secure, all that we have left to do, of course, is to build our house in the little nook in the hillside here. So here is the plan for what I want to do with this area. Originally, I did want to build the actual house here. So I was going to have the door sort of be over here in this area. Then I was going to build backwards in this direction. Uh, kind of, you know, flatten out some of these walls a bit. Have some stairs going up here or, or what have you. But I've decided that maybe that's not the play here. Mainly because I was kind of concerned about what I was going to do for the roof. Uh, being in a very com a confined space like this. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build into the mountain. I'm going to take back some of this. I'm going to take back all of this here, back to this wall here, and then maybe even further beyond. And I'm going to make myself a bit of a hobbit hole to live in, because I think that will suit this area better, to be honest. You know, I might have to move the cows around and get the crops into a different spot as well, but by doing that, what will happen is you won't know there's a house here, really. You know, if you were walking past here, you know, you'd look down and you might see like a, uh, some kind of development in this area or whatever, but you wouldn't know there was a house here unless you came around to this corner here, around this bit here, and saw the front door. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to turn this into a bit of a hobbit hole. I'm not quite sure how this is going to turn out because I've never built a house into a mountain before. So this could be interesting. But the only way to get better at something is to practice it. So here we go. This will be the first time that I've built something into a mountain or a hillside. 
meaning that I now have to work with negative space. It's going to be an interesting challenge, that's for sure. I wanted to use all of the different wood types that I had access to in order to add some variety and depth to the build. Using all the same wood type, especially in the doorway, wouldn't have had the same effect. As I replaced the stone for wooden walls, I realized I was moving further away from making a hobbit hole and more just building a house inside a hill, which isn't what I was initially going for, but at this point I wanted to see how it would look when it was finished. I liked the way that the strip logs as pillars added some more depth to things, but it looked strange not having anything on top of them, so I placed a canopy there which did the job nicely. After this, it was time to work on the garden side of things. Clearing out some space, I decided that I wanted a small river with a bridge over it, leading to the other side. This took me a while to figure out how I wanted to do it, but in the end, I went with stone walls and gates which looked quite effective. Next, I made a small area to move my crops to so that they're closer to my house, and then started clearing out the inside and planning out the rough shape of it all. And although this might seem weird, this is where we're going to end this video. Is everything perfect? No, not even close. But that's okay. Do you know why? We don't need to make the perfect build on the first pass. I'll be the first to admit that this garden area needs a lot of work done to it. There's still so much more that could be done to make it look a lot better than it currently does. And that applies to the inside of the house as well once I start decorating it. Like where am I going to put different rooms? What kind of decorations am I going to have in here? What am I going to use to add depth and life to this place? That's something I can decide over time. And that's the kind of thing that's going to become easier to do over time as I get access to more block types. Because aside from a few pieces of stone that I used for the bridge outside, I've used entirely wood here. So let's think of this as our ongoing project for this season. So that we keep coming back to is our skill level increases in building and see what we end up with by the end of things. But as I said, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.